This is chapter 27 of the Nowhere Emporium, and it is called The Truth. Daniel's worry was turning to cold panic. He had rushed back to the shop front to look for Sharp, but he wasn't there. He prayed that all of this was a misunderstanding, that Sharp simply wanted privacy to study each page in his quest to find Mr Silver. But as Daniel paced anxiously around the dusty room, he grew more certain that Ellie had been right, that there was something off about Sharp. He began to move the pieces around in his mind, struggling to fit them all together. Sharp had shown up only days after Silver's disappearance. There was a hungry look in his eyes every time he caught sight of the Book of Wonders. Daniel had fallen into a deep sleep after handing him the book and hadn't seen or heard from him since. Just like that, the puzzle clicked together. If the wrong person got hold of it, the Book of Wonders could be used to hurt the Emporium, just as easily as help it. It couldn't be a coincidence, could it? Sharp had the book, and everything was crumbling so much faster. Somehow, his presence was speeding things up, causing more damage, and there was one room where that damage could be fatal. Daniel ran and ran, his legs and lungs pleading for rest. He needed to know if he was right about Sharp, and he now knew beyond doubt he had to get the Book of Wonders back. Without it, everything Mr Silver had ever created would be lost. But as he, way, as he made his way deeper into the corridors, his mind clouded and he became confused, losing all sense of direction. His connection with the shop was fading again. Not now, please. A twist and a turn, leaping down a staircase three steps at a time, and another, and another, until one of the stairs crumbled beneath him and he rolled the final few steps and landed with an awkward slap on the floor. Daniel's arm throbbed. He fought back the tears, clenching his fists. A flutter of wings, a flash of silver. Something clipped Daniel's shoulder and landed with a graceful hop beside him. The silver magpie twitched its head to one side, observed him for a few seconds. Then it called out again, and almost immediately the second bird appeared, gliding in a circle over Daniel's head and corkscrewing down to land on his shoulder. It pecked at his ear. Daniel tried to move it away. Beat it, I'm not in the mood. The pecking continued. The first bird, the one at Daniel's side, called out again and flew off down the dark corridor. Before he could blink, the bird was back, this time landing on his head and pecking at his skull as if trying to open a tough nut. Daniel let out a laugh. You can show me the way, he said, scrambling up. Come on, we need to get to the fountain. The birds were clearly agitated as they flew. Daniel found it difficult to keep up, and every so often they'd swoop down and nip him on the ear, or pull at his hair with sharp beaks. They led him to the great hall of staircases, down and down to a crumbling corridor where frost was gathering on the black stone. Daniel rubbed his hands together as he breathed winter morning air. A door was ajar, letting a blade of sunlight into the darkness. Daniel knew where he was, knew that he had visited this place before when he was new to the Emporium. He paused at the entrance, reached out and traced the frost-covered golden letters. The Fountain. With a push, the door was fully open and Daniel stood once again on the surface of a frozen pond surrounded by woodland, hot breath rising from his mouth. Everything was as he remembered, the crisp air, the endless stretch of blue sky. And then he saw the broken mountain of stone that lay in the centre of the pond where the fountain should have been. Daniel hurried out across the pond, his feet crunching in the frost. He picked up a piece of what had once been the fountain and tossed it from hand to hand. There was no sight at all of a silvery liquid, the imagination that Mr Silver had described as the lifeblood of the Emporium. Part of the outer bowl remained intact, though there were sharp fragments of rock jutting out here and there, one of them smeared with a thin red liquid. Blood. A sorry sight, don't you think? Vindictus Sharp stood a few metres away, on the opposite side of the fountain, his hands behind his back. He had not been there a moment ago. Why have you come? he said. Didn't I ask for time to study the book alone? Things have changed, said Daniel. I think I made a mistake. A pause. He took a long breath. I'd like the Book of Wonders back, please. 
Sharp raised a silver eyebrow. You'd like it back? Yes, it wasn't really mine to give away. You can still study it, but I'd like to be there when you do. A thin smile crossed Sharp's lips. If it was not yours to give away, he said, then it is certainly not yours to take back. Daniel stared into the cold blue eyes. An alarm bell was ringing in his head, telling him he'd been right, that Sharp was dangerous. He glanced again at the fountain, and the sharp point of the stone smeared with blood. Whose blood is that? Sharp hesitated. Then he brought his hands from behind his back. They were clutching the Book of Wonders, and they were covered in cuts and scrapes. Daniel took a half step back. He wanted to run, but he couldn't. This was his mess, his mistake. Sharp flashed a smile like a knife. You've caught me red-handed, as it were. To tell the truth, I'm growing tired of the act. I have no intention of returning the book to you, Daniel. In fact, the only reason I allowed you to hold on to it for so long was that I thought you might lead me to Lucian. Daniel stared at the Book of Wonders in Sharp's big hands. I don't get it. Wrecking the fountain. You're speeding things up. Killing the Emporium. Why? Back when we were walking together, said Sharp, you asked me what Lucian was running from. What could possibly frighten him enough that he spent his whole life looking over his shoulder, always ready to flee to the next town, the next city, the next window in time? Sharp brushed a hand over his neat silver hair, ran his fingers over his moustache. The answer, boy, is that Lucian Silver was running, is still running, from me. Daniel heard the words, but he could not make sense of them. Why? Sharp moistened his lips with his tongue. He lifted up the Book of Wonders. The book, said Daniel. That's what all of this is about. So if you've got it, why are you still here? Why haven't you just taken it away? It's not quite as simple as that. The magician cannot steal a magic object from another of his kind. The bond between the creation and the creator is too intense. If I walk out of here with the book, it will not work for me as fully as I desire. No, for the Book of Wonders to truly be mine, I must either win it from Lucian, or he must pass it to me with his blessing. The latter is never going to happen. So I have no choice but to take the book through more aggressive measures. I have been chasing for many years, boy, and each time I come close, each time I can feel the book, smell it, Lucian wriggles away. Not this time. Something is different. He is weak. I found him easily. At this, Sharp spat on the frost. You can see how he has reacted, running away like the weasel he has always been. You'd hoped I'd lead him, you to him, said Daniel. So you could, what, kill him? Sharp smiled an affable smile. That's about the size of it, he said. But seeing as you failed in spectacular fashion to, to locate him, I turned to other means. I knew that there must be a weakness somewhere in the Emporium, and that I could find it in the book. He opened his arms, and here we are, the fountain. Lucian has been relying on the imagination of his customers to keep the place running. He is weaker than I thought. He no longer has any customers, and now that the fountain is no more, the Emporium will crumble much more quickly. Lucian has a choice. He can either stay in his hole like a rodent and die with this place, or he can come out, come out wherever he is and face me. Either way, the Book of Wonders will be mine. He nodded to Daniel. You have talent, a connection with the book that could be very useful. The end of the Emporium need not be the end of your journey. I could help you become great. Help me like you help Mr. Silver said Daniel. No thanks, I don't fancy a knife in the back. Sharp shrugged his wide shoulders and said, Lucian has nobody to blame but himself. His actions, his cowardice, sealed his fate. The choice is yours. Stay here and wait for the Emporium to die. Go down with the ship, or learn from the best, and grow up, and open up a new world of possibilities. Daniel returned the cold stare trying with all of his might to hide the fear coursing through him. The enormity of his mistake was hitting him hard. 
He had invited Sharp in. He had handed the Book of Wonders over. Every cell in his body was telling him to turn and run. But Daniel did not run away. He stepped forward. You, you think I could be great, he said. Sharp leaned his head a little to one side, as if sizing him up. I think that, together, we could discover secrets about the book that even Lucian does not know. Daniel took another step forward, his, art, his heart thundering, his eyes flicked to the book, but only for half a second, just a little closer. How can the book have secrets from Mr Silver? Daniel asked. Magic has its mysteries, my boy, even for the best of us. From somewhere behind him, Daniel heard the call of a magpie. Sharp looked away only for a moment, but it was enough. Daniel snatched the book from his hands and spun away through the frost towards the doorway. He didn't dare look back as he ran. What next? Where to go? He almost tripped over his own feet. A few more steps. Just a few more. A strong hand grabbed at his hair, snapped him backwards with such force that his feet left the frosted ground. When he landed, there was no time to react. Sharp stood over him, sneering. He grabbed him again by the hair and dragged him up. Then, look of mad fury on his face. Sharp reared back and struck Daniel across the mouth. The world blurred at the edges. Daniel stumbled to his knees, blood pooling in his mouth. Sharp was stalking towards him like a big, big cat. He was enjoying himself. Daniel backed away, still on his knees. You'll never find him, he said, clutching the Book of Wonders to his chest. Nobody will find him if he doesn't want to be found. Sharp nodded. Then I'll wait, he said, until this place falls apart and takes him with it. But I will win. He raised his great hand again. Daniel cringed, waiting for the next blow to arrive. But before he could connect, the magpies swooped down upon Sharp, pecking at his eyes, crying out with chattering screeches. Daniel knew that the birds were calling to him. Run away, take the book to safety. But he was dazed, unable to do anything but watch Sharp flail and curse. Sharp, who had been staggering backwards, grabbed one of the magpies at, as it arrowed towards his face. It wriggled and called out as he tightened his grip around it and slammed it to the ground with a sickening crack. Then he lifted his foot and brought it down with all of his strength and weight, crushing the delicate metal bird beneath the sole of his shining black shoe. No! Daniel wanted to run at Sharp, to jump at him and hurt him. Sharp looked up, dragging his gaze from the shimmering carcass of the magpie, and Daniel felt a jolt of ice in his spine. The second magpie continued to attack. By Daniel moments, he glanced at the book in his hand, turned and began to run. The frost was slippery beneath his feet as he dashed to the door. But he was through. He heard Sharp call out, You can't hide forever, Daniel Holmes. Sooner or later, I will find you, and when I do, I will take my book back. The only way I'll leave without it is in a coffin.'